I even I am very privileged and honored today that I am on your, you know, no sir, please the media platform called India uh, Analytic Group, and I am really happy that I got this opportunity to express my views. Uh, as you just asked, uh, let me just first explain that term when you asked what is LOC and line of actual control. Now, in perspective. Let me take you back to 1947, when the War of Independence was on, and India got into a partition, and Pakistan and India was created or got its freedom from the Britishers. Now, while this happened, the Britishers had sectionized India by dividing India into two, in which there were two major portions. One was Punjab, and the other was Greater Bengal or the erstwhile Bengal state. Which coincidentally had very large demographic pattern of Muslims in these two states, and they were on the fringes. So to create a divide in those states was very simple for the Britishers, as they believed in divide and rule kind of a philosophy. So they divided the Punjab and Great and the erstwhile Bengal, Greater Bengal, both these states with one more reason, and that was. These two states fought like hell against the Britishers just before the independence, and to avenge and seek revenge from these two communities and two states, it bisected both the states before partition, and then left us divided, and Pakistan was created. Now, with that, Red Cliff was brought in, and he was asked to draw the border on the map, which is cartographic. Was done from point to point, ridge line to ridge line, and the international border between Pakistan and India was drawn. However, it was Jinnah's mindset and his baby that he wanted Kashmir in pa in Pakistan. He was looking at getting entire J and K, but Kashmir was his piece of cake that he wanted to be part of Pakistan under all circumstances. So Pakistan, while the partition was done, being done and the transfer of population was taking place, this backstabbed India. Got in the Kabyle tribals from Pashtun and other areas of Peshawar in thousands of numbers, under led by the Pakistan Army's officers in civil civvies dress in this guise, and entered these areas of Punch, Mirpur, Jhangar, Gulmarg, Baramula, Muzaffarabad, and so on and so forth, and started butchering the Hindus and Sikhs. Now the war went on. It went on for almost a year and a half, from October 1947 onwards, till actually the UN stepped in and the ceasefire was ordered and brought into effect on 1st January 1949, almost two years or less than two years. Yeah. Now, when the ceasefire took place, wherever the Indian troops and Pakistani troops were sitting in the Jammu division, Kashmir division, Ladakh and Gilgit Baltistan division. They sat there, occupying bunkers and defenses, with an eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball confrontation right next to each other, and that line, which was well within the Jammu and Kashmir state, came to be known of line of control. Technically speaking, from 1949, after the ceasefire was announced by the UN, UN, the war is still on till 2020. That is why we hear of abrogation of ceasefire every now and then in India between Pakistan and India. So, in a similar manner, that is why no troops have withdrawn since 1947. They are still sitting in those post bunkers till date. The war is on. Anything can happen. Then the rule of LOC is: you can capture their platoon, their company locality, their pickets, their bunkers, and you don't have to return them. Even the UN cannot say anything because technically the war is on. Now, this was LOC in specific to. Jammu and Kashmir, correction, Pakistan and India. Now come to line of actual control. A similar thing happened in 1953 to 55 when the Chinese invaded Tibet and captured the entire plateau, which they call as the palm of their right hand. And they are espousing a theory, which is out in the you know social media these days, that the palm of the right hand has been captured and now remain the five fingers. Ladakh, Nepal, Bhutan, Siliguri, and Arunachal Pradesh, which I think is too far-fetched for a military analyst like me. It cannot happen. 
So the line of this nature, when the Chinese came in and did not withdraw and sat there, that line came to be termed as line of actual control, in specific to Indo-China confrontation. Line. Okay, I hope I have explained. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you can, yes, sir. That is why you have war, you have fighting, you have twenty people martyred just two three days back. Yes. Our Indian soldiers are gone. Our commanding officers gone. This war is on. So there is no international border there. So the reason and why it happened, I'll come out when I talk about. Yes, sir. All right. Now, before I come up to the military perspective of what is happening today between China and India, I would like to throw light on the historic background of a country because I think that is very important for people to understand of what is the psychology of the Indian political leaders, what their the political masters as you call them, and their support system called the bureaucracy. Or the babus of India, and the mind of Indian Defence Forces, apart from the awam or the population of India. Now, India, as we all know, was subjugated for centuries to the invaders. The last one being the British. Now, with that, what happened? The Indian mind got repeatedly conditioned into subjugation, and with that, they lived in. Abject poverty. They were slaves. They lived like slaves in their own country. There were no united country or union of India. There were princely states. Every Maharaja had his own methodologies of, you know, taking taxes and fighting the invaders and using people. So they were suppressed. So that that actually gave rise to a psychology of no resistance towards the invaders or intruders. Unfortunately, that happened as a mind in the mind of the Indians. Centuries and centuries earlier. However, three hundred years from today, that is in the early seventeenth century, the Sikhs under Guru Gobind Singh came as the saviors, and in terms of formation of a Khalsa army or the Khalsa sect, who became the army of Guru Gobind Singh, started fighting with Mughals and Britishers. I had just explained to you about British before the. Went away. They yes, sliced yes. Punjab and Bengal. Now, when all this happened, the battles continued with Mughals and then with Britishers, and finally it gave the the direction and and took India toward the part of freedom and ultimate independence in 1947. Now I like to touch upon in early 1940s, actually between 1935 and up to 47. This period was very important in Indian history. The, our political leaders were actually divided in opinion, and and they picked up large number of opinions and different concepts from either Mughals or from the British. And some looked at the methods of violence, non-violence, diplomacy, as also large number of them. Not the leaders, I'm saying the me, people who mattered also learned the art of corruption. While all this was happening. Our bureaucrats learnt the art of divide and rule from their colonial masters, and reap the benefit as being the best of the class amongst all in the in the country, amongst all institutions in India. They became the supremos. They, they adopted the Brown Sahib culture. In their method of functioning, they actually suppressed and divided our Indian leaders, who I would very I would not hesitate to say, lacked the foresight. And thought process, or even to the extent of statesmanship, they were new to this game of politics. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, I would like to comment upon him, who, because it matters even till today, was a prime example, a classical example of the kind of leadership that spelt out. I would like to qualify that. He was attracted toward the British culture. He loved his whisky. He even had the word about he was very fond of white skin. He had some. Relations here and there, and he thought that he superior to his colleagues in the country. He also adapted the British kind of a mindset, but unfortunately, he lacked strategic foresight, had no knowledge of terrain of India or the adjoining countries, and he lacked the knowledge of military affairs. He was responsible for division of the Akhand Bharat or the partition of India, he broke the country into two. And went the way with of the two nation theory, and 
was lulled by the british in creation of pakistan he was responsible for the split of the most powerful and the frontier state of india punjab and in doing so he not only split the strength of the country but the equilibrium of the country was shattered he lacked vision he could not imagine what is the mind of muhammad ali jinnah and in the bargain he lost a major portion of his own homeland jammu and kashmir to pakistan which is called today as pakistan occupied kashmir he failed to see that despite the sikhs and hindus of punch and jammu division and kashmir division who were killed to an approximate number of 1 lakh by the kabailis in 1947 he ousted maharaja hari singh out of jammu and kashmir forced him to go to bombay and eventually to italy where he died and in the and in his place appointed sheikh abdullah as the chief minister of jammu and kashmir a man who was evil in design and who had muslim mindset who wanted to bring communal kind of a, a divide in the, in the state of jammu and kashmir and also imagine when the kabaili raid took place it was pandit jawaharlal nehru which took the issue to united nations instead of listening to our leaders like sardar patel to take military or police action as in the case of hyderabad and junagadh he could have done that with jammu and kashmir and the matter would have been solved there would have been no kashmir issue okay i wanted to highlight this thing and uh, he also failed to read the mind of the bureaucrats who were playing the fiddle and in the bargain what happened the bureaucrats elated themselves as the top most elite class of the country suppressing the defense services and other institutions as a result of all this when he did not get the right advice nehru and india got the first slap on its cheek in 1962 from china that was the background and they wanted to bring this out and that was the fear of the dragon set in the mind of indian leaders which is called as the 1962 syndrome which prevails even today one major blunder that he also did was concept of being non aligned and there is no requirement of military or, or defense services and only police is good enough for law and order of the country he began by scrapping the time tested post of commander in chief of all forces in india who was the last man was lord mountbatten he scrapped this appointment the moment we became independent and i think it was the biggest mistake he did after 73 years we have installed the same appointment of commander in chief to be called as cds yes chief of the general people yes. power chief of defense staff after 73 years imagine had this post continued from 1947 it would have been a most ripe and seasoned kind of an institution and we would have been a joint force for last 70 years it could have made a difference we could have become a regional power of sorts much before at least to 30 40 3 4 decades ago there was another week and a bad spin off for an implication that took place because of scrapping the commander in chief and bringing down the defense forces in hierarchy and order of precedence as compared to the indian police services ias ifs and so and so forth today the defense services are lower in pay grade scale than the police services yes. the the people who matter for for respecting and honoring and saving the sovereignty of the country so that that was the flaw or blunder that caused by nehru and i thought i would like to highlight this and what has happened the national security agencies and the national intelligence agencies are being led by either civilians or by police cadre officers and who have no knowledge of terrain in in at large as also have no military background no military mindset no art of war have proved to be failures in as much they did not provide the raw ntro and so and so agencies i don't want to name any more Have actually failed to provide the information of build-up of Pakistan during Op Pawan, a uh, correction, uh, Op Vijay, 
and in the present context the built up of chinese we have satellite we have everything they failed to inform us or warn us warn, warn us that this is what happened so that was the effect that i wanted to bring now i like to touch upon an issue of the lessons that we did not learn from 1947 till as later of it we did not learn military lessons war like lessons where we needed jointness where we needed interactive kind of uh, war fighting capability seamlessness basically absolute seamless integration and that the government did not learn and now after 73 years i think somehow sense has prevailed and the cds has been installed however i'll touch upon this issue uh, after a few minutes yes sir. now another big damage that this system that i've explained have done about 8 years back i was a brigadier that time in the military operations department and in fact i was involved directly in it of briefing the then erstwhile defense minister mr anthony as also the prime minister mr manmohan singh on raising the mountain strike core we spent we burnt midnight oil and in one month we prepared the kind of paper and the kind of force in terms of mountain strike core that is required by india unfortunately after the approval of government this proposal was stymied by vested interests by vested people i cannot directly say bureaucrats but i don't know who all worked towards it and they said that indian army is enlarged we don't have money how will we pay pay scale we did not consider our the threats to our sovereignty that was more important so now today we realize and the political establishment had, was quite about it they were having no knowledge of military affairs political people approved it was approved by the government then why was it why was it shelved why was this time it's a big uh, it's a subject in itself but now what had been lost in in losing that mountain strike core what we have lost is the deterrence capability yes. especially against china in the mountains of ladakh and arunachal pradesh had the mountain strike core been raised in complete it was planned to be raised in 8 years today almost 6 and a half years have gone by by another 6 month or end of this year or mid next year we would have the mountain strike core fully ready operationalized equipped with modern weapons state of art weapons and it would have given us the defensive balance between ladakh and arunachal pradesh we we would have not to rush we would have a isr intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance capability including the modern kind of links available to this core and it was highly trained airborne troops would have been available and all this build up and all would have been in a in a matter of you know hours so we lost all that that was the most unfortunate part and we lost the capability of fighting the two front war simultaneously right from the initial stage that is the biggest loss of timing yeah that's the, the, that's the serious fight. loss that's the most serious it's loss it's absolutely serious loss. and today i i hope delhi realizes what what folly has it been and i hope they restart raising uh, the core luckily one division of the core was raised okay so the balance needs to be there it was cost wise it was only 65000 crore that it doesn't matter yeah <laughs> peanuts it's, it's, peanuts it's not even it. peanuts sir it's not even peanuts <laughs> okay let me come to the subject of what is happening yes what you asked now situation post outbreak of corona in wuhan china sometime in on october november last year or 2019 yes now there has been an exponential rise in the infected cases around 8 million today look at india is touching almost touching 4 lakh today yes the deaths all over the world has approximately 0.6 million yes what has this resulted into world over it has resulted into crippling the economy loss of jobs and employment in world over closure of industries and trade threatening life with the health pandemic spreading all over the globe and tot in total in some it has generated panic all over the a global panic now when you look at it was this corona wuhan generated or was it orchestrated was it natural we don't know the world is now looking for investigations and trying to see 
the origin of the disease was it done in the laboratories of wuhan was it a bio weapon was it orchestrated by china for the design that i'm going to spell out of what military design china had or military economic design china has in mind it's not clear still not clear. but however the denial of information by china of corona to the world and who last year and till as late as march or april uh, february march 2020 tends to be orchestrated by china why were they hiding this yes. information secondly they hid how did they control it wuhan is open how did they control it do they have a vaccine or they don't have a vaccine so they have been hiding that also it amounts to orchestration of this disease for vested interests whether they are political military geopolitical or economic in nature we will see that as we go along now there is a shift on behavior of china what has been learned from researcher china wants to capture the world by 2021 and become a superpower mm. and now seeing the condition of what is happening in america europe and elsewhere and its regional competitor called india all that is happening we are in a serious lockdown kind of a condition so china thought that this is the right time to actually spin off the results in in their own favor besides this there was actually a global black backlash against china being generated from february march onwards this yes. this year yes people were pointing fingers at china because of all what i've just explained there's a global backlash so china started getting becoming panicky you know the situation which uh, gave rise to certain predicament and fears of china and they are the australia australia america india are actually the country who are leading the charge of wuhan probe and investigation so that even irked japan. china against the even japan and japan also. yes even japan so that is irked china to a large extent and it is looking at these two countries with a radar taiwan was actually the one who who finally gave this information to who that there is a human to human transmission disease which has emanated from china maybe tohan uh, correction wuhan and china got antagonized and in turn the military leadership of china recently threatened taiwan that we will overrun you and we will come and uh, capture with that threat what happened america moved its three aircraft carriers and the uh its forces uh, including missile missiles which were placed in, in uh, the area of south korea and these forces came into uh, the pacific ocean but unfortunately the indian hierarchy or the intelligence systems failed to read this battle indicators of what is happening why have three aircraft carriers and the other you know the bombers b52 bombers of the american and the missile have come to south korea why have they come in this day why was that not be continuously watched and analyzed unfortunately we all failed there also apart from that the assertions made by our top leaders in parliament that our now new narrative is pok we will retake pok and that includes excise chain so that irk china against india in specific the threat to the cpec that the corridor from baluchistan who have now started fighting for their independence and somehow or as the reality is that india and iran support baluchistan baluchistan is this cause yes. and with that again china feels threatened and has panicked because of its cpec for the china pakistan economic corridor wherein it has sunk about 60 million dollars billion dollars it's a pet project next was the india's romancing with the united states of america in the recent times inching closer and maybe because of trump and are by default or by whatever design the chinese have started getting hurt by india also and we all know what china is doing in south south china sea is going it's trying to it's a sunk certain fishing vessels of indonesia and vietnam 
they are trying to trouble those countries, claiming the entire thing is not following the international law of C, uh, of the economic EZ e e e and the you know those kind of things. So it is actually all put together. These were the predicaments and fears of China, and there was a problem in the China uh, population because of Corona also. So what did China do? China started a process of called diverting the people's or its own people's attention towards a nationalist thing by undertaking military adventure or actions. And to begin with, after Taiwan, threatening Taiwan, to begin with India. So now let's start claiming the gaps and the un, uh, you know, defined areas along the line of action. The grey areas. And that is how the free area, the grey areas in the LSC. That's how it happened in May. It happened in uh, in two thousand seventeen. Also, it happened in uh, Dhokalam. Now it it happened in May fifth sixth, where you remember that Lieutenant Sox yes. they gave punch the major of China. Yes. And imagine our leadership. He was moved out of that area and sent down through Adam duties. It demoralized the, not only the officer but the entire community of the army. The, had it been Pakistan, that boy would have been patted on his back and probably given nishane hazar from Pakistan or doing such an act. This is the kind of <laughs> leaders we have, and this is the kind of mindset and psyche we have against China. It amounts to all that. Now, what are the strategic plans or actions post March 2020, which have been unleashed by China? Yes. It wanted to divert the back, uh, the backlash, the global backlash, like I told you. China is, as we all know, nibbling all around its border, all around. In an expansionist kind of a theory, like Lebensraum, what the Germans believed in, it wanted to dominate the entire China Sea and all that. And unfortunately, with all this happening, Indians were still sitting quiet. The agencies, national intelligences, were sitting quiet and and mute. They did not analyze and what what the hell is happening and what is likely to happen in month of June, which has now happened. I'll explain that in detail. Now, the latent area, the grey area that we talked that China wanted to capture, it started under the uh, under its philosophy of two steps forward and one step backward. Yes. Which it did in Dhoklam in as later 2017 August. Yes. Now it came in before it withdrew from Dhoklam after talks and whatever. It has made 36. Proper concrete defensive bunkers and defensive systems, and four concrete helipads. That is what it has achieved over there. And today we are seeing certain uh, satellite pictures where we see what is happening in the Galwan River Valley. There are it, there's a report of even they are trying to dam it, divert the water, make the camps and stuff like that. What is the basic intention of China in Galwan? It wants to claim the entire Galwan River Valley. Because it overlooks and dominates the road from Darbuk to the DB, Dolat Bay Goldie, where the air we have an airfield. Now, once it comes there and it occupies the height, the east and south of the Galwan River, it can look down on the road. Like what was the mindset of Pakistani during yes. Op Vijay? They came into the area of Kargil Drah. They were overlooking a national highway, so they could bring down fire. They can cut you off. Anything can happen. So, what a tremendous military advantage. So with that backdrop, it wants to. And secondly, China has also urged that how come India has made a bridge over Shyok River, which leads onto this road. And India, over last two three years, under the Broad Border Road Organization, has fast tracked the making of roads and other defence infrastructures. And this all put together is actually troubling China. Whereas the China wants what 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 China wants? What China wants us to get to the south of Indus River. It wants to take the entire area up to Finger One and beyond the Pangong So Lake area, so that the entire Ladakh defences are south of Indus River, and they can dominate the area of Aksai Chin. They can give provide depth to Aksai Chin through which the corridor, the highway runs. That is the military design in their mind. Physically, what happened in March, April? Or rather, February, March, April, two thousand twenty. Now, this is an unfortunate part, and I would not. I call it. I don't hesitate to call it as professional disintegrity. 
during the summers when the snow melts both the side china india is supposed to come and patrol these areas but unfortunately because of the on the, un, under the pretext of corona or the excuse of corona our military patrols did not go out or possible were not sent to the extent that used to go up to finger eight in this particular area patrols didn't go so when the chinese came they found a vacuum they found no indian troops so they came. were in no other than xi jinping the president of china told mr narendra modi in person to speedily resolve the kashmir issue on trilateral basis implying china pakistan and india hold joint talks and resolve this issue and how can they resolve the issue without with talks only is that means you convert the loc and lac to ib and give the gift away the land which is truly ours of, of pok and aksai chain and such calm valley to pakistan and china and they say thank you very much but unfortunately for whatever reasons or means a prime minister ignored that warning stage 1 was unleashed october 2019 stage 2 threat pla crossed the line of actual control in april 2020 yes they checked up with russia some input from russia and the russian told them no it's an it's a summer annual exercise of petroleum with the chinese undertaking so our bureaucracy and intelligence agencies also went into you know they they sat back and did not take it seriously unfortunately they crossed and intruded into our own territory indian territory beyond their line of perception beyond their line of perception they crossed the lac they crossed their perceptual line and came almost 4 to 5 kilometers specifically in galwan river valley crossing such areas or transgates intruding into such area is deemed in military parlance as an act of war the stage 2 of threat was not taken seriously and we have been saying there is no build up i am sorry to say i am reading today on social media that yesterday i believe there was a remark in the evening where they were talked by none other than our honorable prime minister the chair has not captured any post of our nor has they come into a territory so people are reacting to that i leave it at that the stage three was unleashed on the night of 14th and 15th june 2020 couple of days back wherein our indian soldiers including one commanding officer total 20 in number were martyred by chinese without weapons that was the intimidation stage 3 which has already been unleashed by china people of defense analysts in india have to understand all that what is happening or likely to happen next and next i mean what are the likely action china is going to do from a period of 30th june to 30th september these 90 plus days china is quite capable of launching an operation large scale operation into this area of ladakh as also open the second front in arunachal pradesh maybe a prong in the central sector of joshi mat of uttarakhand it is quite possible and we should not be complacent about this kind of a thing that the statement that i am making and these are the war indications that the people have to pick so this is this this will be the fourth stage of an all out attack on the enemy and after that will be domination after it achieves achieves its military objectives or what i explained to you so what is troubling uh china in the area of shaksgam and ladakh region india was actually taming the rivers shyok river nubara river and changchamo river which are offshoot and tributaries of indus river yes yes they were yes. trying to put dams there now if you put dams on this you are restricting the water flow of indus to pok and in pok china has actually built five to six dams for pakistan that is the dams are bunji daimar bhasha dasu dam patan and thako these are the five dams in pok on indus rivers and if we do the dams on these rivers the water will be controlled by us and the money that has been sunk and the kind of friendly uh, you know pursuits that are being made by china toward pakistan army will suffer badly so that is one major strategic problem with what is happening uh, between china and uh, pakistan and india
it also wants to remove the this major military advantage the indian army has in terms of holding siachen glacier and indra kaul we are dominating karakoram highway and, and the areas closer to right at the top of the uh, akshay chin dominating their uh, area of highway the karakoram uh, it passes through the karakoram pass so what is going to happen what what do the next step as far as far as stage three that i just told you china is likely to capture the heights up to galwan river and shyok river confluence take the heights and then take a thrust northwards from the other side of the river towards dbo possibly capture dbo and the and the heights dominating dbo with that a second of offensive can be undertaken by pakistan by china in the urdok that is west of sachin urdok glacier through sakskam valley which is which it is holding which which pakistan and yeah that's just china. an extension for them it's just an extension for it's them because extent. so actually it facilitates two pronged attack coming yes. into the sachin glacier area and indra kaul area and if they achieve success with pakistan also now playing along with them launching a direct attack on sachin glacier to dive, to divert indian forces and build up they will they are likely to achieve their objective and if they do that then they will be sitting pretty we lose all the advantage that we have because in mountain unless you don't have air strips and yes. roads you cannot sustain battles for logistics system okay now let me explain the important issue of patrolling policy that everybody in india you know actually quite uh, Foxed about and confused of what is happening. Now, technically, what happened is China has actually played the game of chess. It believes in mind games. It believes in psychology. Psychology, you know. So, what it did was, Chinese prevailed upon that 1962 syndrome on the Indian political master's mind and bureaucratic mind, and they played chess with our leaders and bureaucrats. And what they achieved. they executed the philosophy of wolf warrior with complete finish they psyched the indians to in 1993 to accept the policy of patrolling the area along the lsc towards up to the line of perception of china and up to the line of perception of india within this area they say we will do patrolling without arms in the first phase was arms to be hung behind in a reverse mode on the back and in the second do not carry weapons in these kind of way now what benefit does it give india goes in smaller strength they didn't they do not bring carry weapons nor do they carry weapons they are sitting But ducks standing, we are sitting ducks how do how do, how are we sitting ducks we were 100 they were 1500 they were large group people there large number of man power and soldiers and secondly they cheated us by bringing a different set of weapons instead of rifles and machine guns and what have you swords I, i believe they had swords and they had the clubs baseball clubs with the barbed wire on top yes. and they have knuckle dusters and what have you they bought all that and they hit them and placed them very close for their use death by bullets or death by these kind of weapons is death and ultimately unfortunately we lost 20 of our of yes. the souls so they, they achieved the aim of patrolling without weapon not only that it gives them the space of misconstruing or misinterpreting the gap and lsc in different manners of what has been happening from finger 2 to finger 8 over the last one and a half month so it gives them to exploit this a gray area with these kind of things and they can come and show a force they can bring their machines they can get their dozer jcb whatever engineering equipment and they can do all that and you don't carry weapons and as uh, the erstwhile defense minister god bless his soul mr george fernandez had made a statement china is enemy number 1 so how do you romance with china number 1 enemy without weapons on the frontier the lesson has been learned i think by by delhi indian fell prey to accepting this new military maneuver and 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 bought it i don't know how they fell into trap india was actually coaxed to accept their views and stance by the belligerent strategy of china in i will explain that just the chinese also do not recognize the macmore line 
we don't we yes. don't believe in yes. we don't recognize we have our own perceptions wherever we want to draw a line and that line of perception is not fixed it's flexible yeah, every yeah. summer it changes so they're nibbling they're getting it even the experts in all over the world are understanding their philosophy uh, there is a potential of misinterpretation like i told you which they exploit every summer indian territory indian the next issue which has hurt china is india gave asylum to the tibetans and dalai lama in dharamsala yes after that 1953 is, that's that a hard burden for them they can't get over that is the bone of contention between india and china when i was in national defense college i had mentioned at one stage to a speaker eminent speaker sir it's high time that we request dalai lama to go back to lhasa go and address it go back to your own homeland and i'm sure if that happens china is not going to kill him china is going to respect him they will be there he is a holy man of the world holy chap he is equated at at, at uh, along with pope pope so they are not going to kill him but it will resolve the enmity between india and china and bring them closer this bone will be removed from the throat one major thing i want to bring out so people have been asking questions all over is there a likelihood of a major scale war the mere fact that the world's two oldest civilization india or indus valley civilization and china have never come to war with each other because of one great factor and that is the great himalayan range separating yes. us yes you cannot undertake offensive operations over 18 20000 feet which the range spreads in width to hundreds of kilometers you know a diff- distance from gormo to lhasa is approximately 4 and a half thousand kilometers mm, yes from lhasa or kunming the air distance distance to the western these areas ladakh areas is 5 to 6000 kilometers you can do skirmishes you can do you know kind of funny games but you can't come and launch a major offense and that is one reason why chinese after overrunning bumla tawang and sela went back left everything they didn't even capture one inch of our indian spell they went back and why was that because they knew they cannot sustain here they cannot sustain the mainland china thousands and thousands of kilometers away and what do they achieve what is the end game they don't want to come and capture calcutta or they want to send in joshimat or they want to come and capture leh no they want to take the advantages give depth to oxygen give depth to the cpac this corridor and that's it they want to be super superior and they want to dominate the entire region so that is the basic issue what has happened over there so what should we do now what should india do first i want to bring this out specifically through your yes sir great um, platform that don't listen to military fictions from people in specific mr pravin sahani who is the editor in chief of the force magazine he was so belligerent a couple of days back wherein he has had no compunction in saying that lot of jet- retired generals are making lot of comments and giving appreciation and thought processes and they are all wrong why did he say that he is saying he is trying to teach the indian defense forces ki what are the modern terms in warfare <laughs> like non conflict war network centric war informational information dominant he telling us the strategic so jargons don't uh, win wars jargons don't win wars it, yeah so and tactical level strategic level kinetic capability non kinetic capability so these things are actually he had the adopt all the cds general rawat bipin rawat openly ridiculed him that he does not know what he is talking he talking this he talking that he had no knowledge he telling general rawat openly on a video <laughs> it was shocking um, i think he should better wake up and cock up because otherwise some good military hard retired military general is going to take him and teach him some lesson <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what is required <laughs> and i must tell him two things he must if he hears me that he no, wrong make sure he two hears you sir i will make sure he hears you yeah number 1 number 1 he said 
they will there is no military option in in ladakh region they will be non contact war there will be information denial suppression electronic this that he is totally wrong because electronic separation information denial and dominance cannot take place with effect in the mountains of himalaya there are interference there are no line of sight there are it cannot happen it may happen 20 25% but not 100% so he is wrong technically wrong on that front and secondly he said there is no military option he will not find a contact war we have lost 20 soldiers in a no, in a contact war without weapons what is he talking he totally wrong i think he wakes up so what do we do here up at at the country we should shed the myth and the 1962 syndrome that china is a great dragon and he is more powerful than us times have changed five decades have gone back we are no longer with 303 we are the fourth largest defense force and army in particular in the world our air force is better than in chinese air force we have an edge over them it is proved there is analysis on the net i think nitin gokhale did an analysis yes. on air force yes. comparison yeah. and yeah. it was very well brought out that we have an edge on chinese air force maybe they have more missiles that conventional missiles but we got substitutes too and he cannot like i told you he cannot bring massive operations over ladakh he'll be the sufferer he'll have long long line of logistic tail behind him. we must create a new narrative and run it on our term i know it is little simple to say but that is what india has got to do we and the next thing that we should do is especially the indian polity and indian bureaucracy do not interfere with military and defense forces responsibility they know their responsibility how can you uh, why don't we, we head should roll head should roll in ladakh how come they intruded and you never fired a bullet they come much beyond the line of perception they broke all the pr- protocol and you still accept it and then you still send your people without weapons i mean it's absolutely shocking lay down charter and give freedom to the theater commanders and the co commanders they are senior rank people they got almost 38 to 40 years of military experience under their belt and they you cannot hold them like puppets you cannot tell them how to do their job just leave it to them they are very very capable of doing it and it's being proved we thought we will get back and we will get suppressed by chinese aggressive behavior or belligerent sorry if we lost 20 there are unconfirmed report that they have 40 on the other side yes 43 and if that has happened 43 it's a great achievement at the back of the co god bless his soul and those men yes. and the bihar battalion who fought like hell and showed hats it to them that's off to them that's off to them i talk to them my salute to them treat intrusion as an act of war from now onward india should not have agreed to lines of perception there are no bloody perception it is on ground yeah not there has to be a definite line, line of there has to be a definite, definite line definite line of ground drawn from this point to that point to this junction to that junction draw it and leave it at that i am not saying convert it into international border now but draw that fix that lac and make sure that the both sides follow it and thereafter if it is intruded or breached the answer will be given by firing maybe bullets or artillery no banners to be displayed you are not school boys you crossing my <laughs> bloody line and you coming into my house go back sorry no banner business i would also like to say here for the, for the military specifically fix the La- lac patrolling program and make sure it is audited it, it should not happen that you are doing it on paper and not on ground that should not happen it will it will take us up a garden path which we have suffered in the past so with due diligence and professional honesty i also want to make a point here bharat the system of giving awards during peace time to indian army air force the navy i think should be now controlled too many awards are being given the awards can cannot be tenure based the chap was a div commander or core commander so he should get a vsm or a navy sm or pbsm what has he done the chap who is now got a 20 men killed and i hope there no future killing is he deserving why did he why did he not read the indicators what was the reaction what where is the professionalism and you award him i'm sorry this should be totally con- controlled and corrected by the government negotiations 
with china should be from a position of strength we should be assertive and firm and not flexible absolutely in our military attitude absolutely our border road and infrastructure border road infrastructure to include your habitat and defense you know bunkers and such like stuff to be on high speed give the responsibility of completion of this task to the theater commander make him answerable can i half and wind up my sure sir sure talk. sir uh so we were talking on uh, improving of habitat and yes, infrastructures yes. and road in the border area yeah, logistical and support. we have no dearth of and logistical support we don't have a dearth of manpower labor or machine power you saw how the migrant labor migrated yes, to bihar yes yes the figure that of 25 lakh people were traveling on road so we have no dearth of man only dearth of will power and decision decision making and, and the money back. decision making decision making. yes lastly i want to bring out what are the options available to india in the present context first are some military options what i already said i want to repeat it let the military do its taus task without interference let them do whatever they are doing in the border they are they are co commander they are army commander they know it let best. them handle it they know it best they know it don't interfere don't tell them what to do what not to do lay down strategic aims and targets to be achieved during war if war breaks out in pakistan or china let's say china in the present context over next one month what is 14 15 core supposed to do or the eastern theater supposed to achieve that must be laid down now and don't don't back off don't be scared of china i know i'm making the tall statement but this is the military mind and military so experience that's how it should be that's how it should be yes also i want to although there it is already in thought process but i want to say that we must utilize and employ the central armed police forces the rashtra rifles and assam rifles for as war like element along with the army do you know that central armed police uh, police forces total up to the strength of indian army yes crpf itbp yes, ssb yes, yes. all put together are equal to indian army yes. strength so it's a huge force they are blooded they fought in ci ops they are equipped and they are too good yes we should utilize them and there no dearth of manpower against a country like china we got tremendous amount of people to fight for the country generate a new narrative for pok and execute it in next 2 years otherwise we'll keep bleeding for the next 30 years what has been happening for last 3 decades in jammu and kashmir yeah, that has to stop we've not been able to achieve any the nonsense has to stop and the answer is if not diplomatic take the narrative to pak pok and capture it there are methods and plans to capture it it's no great shake what are the political and and of course the last point and military option is enhance the defense budget and speed up your defense acquisitions and and uh, you know equipment shortages political options do not convert loc and lac to ib be very wary of it claim our territories on historic records and fight for it with china especially abrogate 1954 panchil treaty for border peace and tranquility actions just abrogate it it is outlived this and its self life is over it's an old old outdated kind of a principle we must recognize our regional countries their troubles tibet recognize their government in exile recognize taiwan support taiwan support hong kong support uighur cause in china and step up military and political nature of our quad we need to do this we need to start now looking outward not inward on the economic front like what is happening on and the country is making a noise freeze all chinese investments in india discourage and stop indo china trade i understand the problem i know there are thousands and thousands of indian industries which get their raw material from china whether they are defense industry their medicine their fabric their whatever defense the raw material come from china we will have to face the burden for some time and if we mean business put an end to it and an end can be put in one simple simple method customs will be asked there will be no stuff which will come through the ports or the air field cargoes into india from china they will not be accepted whatever happens there is in the news two days back there was something about railways project yes. from yes. Uh, it got scrapped to delhi yeah it got scrapped it got yeah it got scrapped yes there was some technical glitch in it on tendering credit to help with it we are fighting our enemy we don't worry about policy and we must get as many foreign country foreign factories in india which are going to lift from china 
we must invite them we must get them and we must relax the rules like transfer of technology and all that what has been happening in the past which are the, actually the stumbling blocks for our industry and make in india lastly bharat for the present our defense forces should remain on highest alert and be physically and psychologically tuned to face any threat either from pakistan or china to protect the sovereignty of our great country and i urge the government of india to enhance our defense budget in light of the imminent two front threat that is likely to come up and speed up the pending defense procurements on war footing if they fail this time we are gone and i'm sure some of the point that i mentioned in elucidated here will find their way up somewhere Sir, definitely we will be the r for us it's important that every citizen of india not just uh, knows but also understands the intricacies of any issue and what more serious uh, can it be than the defense of our country uh, very honestly this was something which we were discussing and uh, you know with my fellow uh, people at uh, indoi my team we were talking and we decided that you know we will just start with the military because that's the beginning you know that's my first line uh, of defense it's not the last line of defense that's my first line of defense and my first line of defense has to be impenetrable actually so we started right. with uh, that today uh, in the next week we are definitely going to because the weekends uh, it's the weekend so starting monday we will be doing with not just uh, a, you know defense strategists but also with journalists because indians or fellow citizens should also understand why is there so much of a biased reporting you know uh, mm. why is there a difference like a terrorist is a terrorist is a terrorist you know I, i you know my army shoots down a terrorist and once dead he becomes a poor school teacher's son matlab he should not be glorified that's exactly he should that, not that, be, his exactly name the point. and photograph image should not come on media that's exactly my point like you know as long as he's yeah. alive he's a terrorist the minute he dies he becomes a poor yeah. school teacher's son uh-huh. you know <laughs> uh that, that's kind of uh, inexplicable and yes uh, we will be discussing with not just the journalists and strategists but we are also going to talk to diplomats uh because it's not just the might but also uh diplomacy which works and uh, we would really want each and every citizen uh, that's you know kind of uh, high hopes but then we really intend to reach out to as many people as many citizens as possible with the proper knowledge and uh, you know leave the decision making to them and whatever needs to be done has to be done there is no uh, there's no compromise possible on the safety and security of your nation and yeah, i am not going to i yes. think i sorry i think i've been a little extraordinarily blunt in my statements so what i have spoken no sir it may rub some people on the wrong side so be it so, so be, be it. it i have my my knowledge my experience and that is my view so i put it across take it for leave sir i leave it at that and i am ready as these old generals and retired generals have not retired we have just reattired that's all sir civies like this but we are ready to go back absolutely to the sir ready to go absolutely. back absolutely why the supporters to the front line absolutely so uh that was that is the plan so uh, next week definitely we will be having a group discussion amongst all the experts from different uh, fields and uh, i hope to see you there again not hope i will i you know hope is a very uh, wrong word you know how I how, how, how i can pressurize you I, i'm going to cling on to you <laughs> and i'm not going to let you go unless you don't say yes so uh but yes you have been be very gracious sir <laughs> you have been such it's been such an hair humbling experience for me i just sent a whatsapp and you so graciously agreed and uh, uh, post which we had so many conversations telephonic uh, it was really so nice of you uh, we will be looking out for you in the next one week uh, with the group discussions and all the individual 
points of view will be shared amongst all the speakers so you know you know what's being spoken about and right. i i am really on behalf of every citizen i i'm sure every citizen of india joins me in not just thanking you for whatever you have done in the last three and a half decades but for what you are doing now because what you're doing now is far more important which is actually providing the citizens with the information which is absolutely required for them to make up their minds you know i can't make up my mind with biased reports which come out from journalists or uh, sound blurring uh, tv journalists it's not even journalists you know they are presenters they run a show it's it's yeah. it's basically for trp and for profit which is fine which is perfectly fine but it's not information information comes from such interactions where you know it's it's easy to understand it's in simplified format there is no jargons used there is no complications attached there is no biased uh, views here so thank you very much i really thank you with folded hands and i really so would not know how to jai thank him. you jai hind sir <laughs> jai hind jai hind thank you very much jai. thank you sir thank you thank you thank you sir good day sir